let's talk about why some diabetics get gangrene, okay, and others don't. First of all, what is gangrene? It really has nothing to do with the color green, but when you get gangrene, the tissue, usually in the feet or the toes, start first, and then sometimes in the hand, start turning black, yellow, red, and even uh, kind of a shade of green. Now, the actual word gangrene comes from the Latin word, which means putrefaction, dead or dying tissue. And the reason why the tissue is dying is simply because you're exposing the tissue with way too much sugar, okay? So if your blood sugar is too high, that sugar goes through the vascular system and the tiny little blood vessels, especially starting in the toes, and sometimes in the hands, because you start off from the heart with larger blood vessels, and then it gets down to the bottom of the feet to the tiny capillaries. Then it comes back through the venous system. But when you expose glucose to your vascular system, you get all sorts of destruction. You get massive oxidation, creates free radicals, hemorrhaging, so you're getting bleeding, getting clotting. The, the vascular system is becoming thicker and stiffer, and you're getting a healing response, uh, inflammatory response, and all of this is gonna stop the blood flow to the tissues and to the nerves. Now, the lining on the inside of the vascular system is called the endothelial layer. And this layer does not require insulin to transport glucose into those cells, which means that if you have insulin resistance, you won't have any resistance there. If there's too much glucose, it's gonna drive it right into the tissues and that's really what's creating the damage. If you look at insulin resistance as a protective mechanism to block insulin and glucose from going in the tissues because it's toxic in large amounts, and there's certain tissues that don't require insulin, and those usually get hammered, okay? The brain cells, for example, don't require insulin. You have the brain uh, blood barrier, which does, but not the actual brain cells. The red blood cells don't require insulin. And this is why when you get a test, it's called A1C, they're measuring um, the amount of exposure of that sugar to the red blood cell to determine if you're a diabetic or not. So the more sugar in the blood, the more vascular problems you're going to have, and that's going to stop the nutrition to the tissues and the oxygen to the tissues, and it's going to start dying, and that's what's called gangrene. So you have a combination of dead tissue, ulcers, and severe nerve damage, a lot of times there's pain involved until the nerve is dead and then you have no pain, it's completely numb. Now, what could be done for this condition? Well, the most important thing is to avoid this in the first place by not consuming so much sugar, okay? Doing keto and IF, so you never end up in this situation. But if you already have this situation, there might be a couple things that you can do depending on how severe it is. Um, let's say you don't wanna get surgery and remove your toes, okay? And maybe you have certain tissues that are not so bad. Maybe you have an ulcer or some infection. Well, guess what? The FDA did approve in 2004 maggot therapy, and I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. They actually put maggots in the ulcer to clean up the dead tissue. Certain types of maggots eat the dead tissue and they don't eat the healthy tissue. So they clear out the infection. Interesting. In fact, um, they're finding that it's even more effective than certain surgeries because it disinfects the area and it stimulates healing. And within one or two days, it could be totally cleaned out. So these maggots actually release enzymes and they also release uh, like a, a broad spectrum antibiotic to kill off the infection. It's quite interesting. But of course, you would wanna make sure that you change your diet so you don't keep exposing these tissues to glucose. You don't want to just rely on medication to control your blood sugars. Medication basically takes the excess blood sugar and, and, and has to put it somewhere. It doesn't evaporate. It lowers it, but it puts it somewhere in the, in the tissues. Um, but we want to actually eliminate the sugar from the diet. The other thing that I would recommend, uh, especially if you're getting, let's say you're getting nerve damage, but maybe it's not gangrene yet, is to start taking benfotamine. Benfotamine is a B vitamin that is made into a fat soluble version. So it penetrates the myelin sheath. It goes right into the nerves and actually can help to protect against the high sugar and the complications. And it's great for peripheral neuropathy. It's called benfotamine. Get some, take like 
four tablets a day spread out, and you'll see some really wonderful changes with that. Anyway, I wanted to create uh, this video to explain why diabetics get gangrene and what's involved. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.